how to create crossword puzzles for your KDP low content books using a free tool. Hi, Kerry here from Dream Creator B and welcome to our channel where we show you how to make money online with KDP low content books and Etsy new training every week. So be sure to hit the big red subscribe button down below. So today I'm actually showing you how to use Crossword Express to actually create crosswords and I'll leave a link in the description for you to be able to download the actual software yes it is free to use it's free to use for commercial use there is quite a bit of work that you need to do with it but at least it's a great tool that you can use and it also comes with different language supports I also created a previous video on how to use this tool to create free word search puzzles if you want to check that out check it out on the top right hand corner uh, or check it out in the description but first before we move on you need to actually install java before you actually install this program so this is java here i'll leave a link in the description for that as well just click on it download it and install it on your computer java can be on a mac or windows or a linux and the same with this you can use it for macs or windows and possibly linux as well all you do is you click and download it comes in a small folder it's quite quick to download depending on your um, internet speed and you need to you get the jar file also another thing to note certain countries cannot actually access this uh, website so if that is the case you might need to use a vpn or virtual private network but it comes as a jar uh, java file and once you've installed it, this is what it looks like. It just comes in folders like this. Here, do not delete any of these folders because they are the dictionaries that are used within the program. So once you click on it, it should open up this program here. And there are so many puzzles that you can do to create either a single puzzle book. So maybe just crosswords or word torch or Sudoku or killer Sudoku or Philomeno or any of those, or you can do a combination of all these different puzzles and create a huge activity book or just or a sequence of activity books. Now with the standard crossword, there are different grids that you can use. You can create your own grids or you can be using the ones that are there. You can also use the dictionary that is there, or you can create your own, say you're doing some theme puzzles. I'll show you how to do that. But before we go in, I'm just going to show you the main dictionary for puzzle for the crossword, which is English. And there is over 41,542 words and clues in there. So you can make quite a lot of puzzles without inserting them. Yes. They are not themed, but they are fantastic puzzles. So let's just quit that. So in here, if we click standard and crossword and go, this is what happens. It actually brings this up here. So if you look at build, this is how you can start a new puzzle. You can give it a name so we can actually say um, puzzles or video. And then I can click OK. And then what I can then do is I can select a dictionary. So again, I want to actually make sure that I have English chosen. And then from there, I can select a grid. Now there's all different types of grids that you can be using. There's a Kuru, there's all the different ones there. There's the American style grid as well. And then there are the British style grids. Now the problem is if you actually do more than one puzzle, say you do 5, 10, 15 or 20 or 50, they will have the exact same grid. So what I suggest you do is maybe do five with one grid, another five with another grid, and then split them up and change them and mix them around in your books. You can also, when we selected the specific grid, you can actually change how it looks by just clicking on these spaces here. So that will change how it looks. And again, you can just put them back by clicking on the white as well. So that's another way of changing your grid. So then once you've done that, you can select your build option. So how many puzzles do you want to do? Now I've done it up to 50. It does create all the same grid in that case. So I decided to change it down to about 
five. I didn't use a theme dictionary, so this is where you can actually come in and create your different theme dictionaries going in, and then you would just select from there. So I don't want to use that because I haven't built any theme dictionaries yet. So I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to actually click start building and then it starts giving me this instruction here that it says building these crosswords. So because it's only five, it doesn't take too long. So I'm going to click OK. And then what I want to do is I actually want to go to print. And because it's a crossword style now, I could have done it as an arrow word or a fill in or a code word or a French style. It lets me do any of those. I'm just going to stick with print crossword. So this is how it comes out. It comes out with puzzle clue solution. And I can actually move things around. If you look at the faint line that's going down and round, that is actually an A4 size portrait and if you look at that one there is actually an A4 landscape which is slightly bigger than the biggest KDP book we have on the market but what I want to do is I actually want to get some of these images as big as possible to fit into the A4 because if I use a high DPI I can actually bring it down without blurring but if I make it bigger to fit a certain book then I'll actually get blurring in it so I can create, I can change all these by changing the layouts. And I'm actually going to start with clue one. So I'm going to click on glue, clue one, clue one. Okay. So you have to keep clicking sometimes. And then what I want to do is I want to move it down. So I'm going to go to about uh, 160. See it? That's far enough. And again, if I click on, or I just drop down on the drop down there, it'll let me go 160. This solution, I'm actually going to move it across so it's out of the way there. And then I might actually make that 160. And I'm also going to change the size of that. So I'm going to do about 70, I think, 70 width and 70 height to try and get it as big as possible. Then clue three, I'm going to move that down to 160 as well. Ooh, 160. And then on the puzzle, I'm going to change that so it's a bit bigger, 160 and 160. So that's a bit too big. Might just move all of those down there, maybe. In fact, I'm going to move that up to 150 and 150. So I'm quite happy with that. I might change that just so it's there more in the middle so I'm quite happy with that if I go to view I can actually see what it will look like so it's giving me the solutions it's giving me all the questions there so I'm quite happy with that now what I want to do is I can either print it out as a pdf and edit it from there or I can print it out as a pn G. So to print it out as a PNG, you need to export it. The reason why I'm doing it as a PNG is because I want the highest DP, the highest DPI or pixel per inch. And it's usually about 300. So I've actually changed that to 600. Now, because I created five puzzles previously, I actually want to print out five. Now, if you didn't create five previously and you only had one and you decide you want to change it to five here, what it'll do is just make a copy of the exact same puzzle. It'll not rebuild your five other puzzles. So you need to click there. And for some reason, it's not doing that. So I'm just going to go back, task, export, and then see if it'll do it. So I'm just going to change it now and then click export. Then what I want to do is I actually want to go to the folder that I'm creating. I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop and I'm going to call this crossword test five. So I actually know where it is. I'm going to click save. And what it should do is it should actually start exporting. Now this can actually take a bit of time, especially if you're doing a lot of files together. So it's already done those. So let's go and have a look on the desktop and actually see if it has created those and so it has and what we can do is we can actually have a look at each png to make sure it's a different one 
and it is every one is a different one so denied pers pers preservation uh cockroach uh it's also given the solutions there and they are different so leotard eight dancers one piece yeah so that's right okay so that is five of them created now what we need to actually edit these because you don't want the solution on where the puzzle is there's no reason for creating a puzzle so you can either compile these into any of your programs like canva keynote powerpoint indesign or uh, affinity publisher or even microsoft publisher as well so or even word so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to open powerpoint so I've got PowerPoint open and I'm going to just delete that. I'll move these grids off because some of you don't like them being on. As you say, you can't see. I'll make it a bit bigger so you can actually see what I'm doing. So we're going to change the size, design. I'm going to go to page setup. I'm going to change that to eight and a half by 11. And I'm going to click OK, scale up. And I'm going to insert the image from the menu because it keeps the DPI. If I just drag and drop, it drops that DPI from 600 all the way down to 72. And we don't want that because this is for a book. So I'm going to go into the file that I had. I'm going to select this one. And I'm going to insert that. So that's fitted in nicely, but there's lots of things I need to do to actually change this. So I'm going to click back on the slide and I'm going to duplicate the slide. So I'm going to use either Command D or Control D. And I'm going to actually do it three times. Now, there's a reason why I want to do it three times. So I'm going to start with the solution. So I'm going to go to picture format. I'm going to crop around the solution here. So I'm going to go up there up there and i'm going to crop that there quite happy with that i'm going to click off it drag up here but i'm still going to be on picture format and i'm actually going to compress the picture because if you're putting loads of pictures in that 600 dpi and you're adding more and more your file is going to get too big and it's not going to upload so the best way of doing it is delete the cropped area of the picture so it's actually got rid of everything there so now what I'm going to do is insert my text box in and I'm going to write puzzle one put it there I'm going to duplicate that and yep put it there call it solution and go to home and I'm going to just center that and bold it. And obviously, you would go in and change your fonts, make it look nice, make it look neat. But all I'm doing is trying to show you it quickly. So the next stage here, I'm going to click on the picture again, picture format, and I'm going to crop. This time, I'm going to crop away the actual puzzle. And I'm just going to crop that, move it in the middle just for now, and compress again. And click OK. Now I'm going to click here this time again, pitch format. So I've clicked on the picture, pitch format, then I'm going to go up here. And all I'm going to do is get rid of all the white bits and everything like that. And click away, drag it down, put it in the middle, and compress that. I'm going to go back to slide three. Highlighting puzzle one, copy that, put it back there. And we know that that is going to be too near to the margin. So I'm going to just bring that down. Move it in the middle, mold it, maybe make it bigger. And then I'm actually going to resize that because it might be a bit too big. So in the middle, go back to this, copy, and paste down here. And that should just about get in, but I'm going to bring it down a bit as well. So that 
is how we actually do that. Now you could actually crop that again and then put it so across is up there um, and down is there. So that is another way you can actually be doing that. So you could go like this. So duplicate that. What we could do is picture format. What? So we're going to put that bit there. That bit there. Again, compress the image. Click OK. And this time again, duplicate that one again. Always give yourself more than enough. So this time again, drop down. Again, compress. Okay, okay. This one along. That one up here. And again, drop that one. Actually, fine. Compress. Click OK. And again. So we've got a bit of white here. Which is not what we want. So I'm going to click on there. I'm on picture format. Just going to see there's no outline. So I could click on remove background. And it should remove the white background. So now I can actually move that up there and line it all up. Ooh. And then they're in the line. So they are all different ways that you can do it. You can edit it the same way that I did that. So that is how to actually use the crossword. But I did promise you how to actually add to the dictionary. So if we go back here and actually quit this printing and actually quit the construction, if we go into dictionary maintenance, we can actually see that these are different dictionaries and it says English and it gives us the clues. If we go to edit dictionary, it actually shows us how it is actually set out. Now in the previous video doing word searches, which again will be in the top right hand corner or down in the description, I actually showed you importing a text file. Now I haven't figured out how to actually import a text file, but you can add your own dictionary. So if we just quit that editing and create a new dictionary and we do that by going task and you can do either theme or standard. I think the theme we might do, I don't know, try that. And then cross words tests. So, and again, you can select your um, language by selecting Latin or Greek or Coptic, Armenian, Hebrew, Arabic. So you can do that way. Convert words to uppercase or lowercase, whatever. Um, and that you can, you don't need to insert word lengths if you don't want. And then you can click OK. So now that's selected that we can actually add in different words. Now I've actually got a. Um, text file when it opens up a crossword text file so all I'd need to do is put copy cinema put that in there and go back here and put film theater in the clue and then just press edit enter I mean and then you could keep doing that for any of these and deadly and again it will actually put them in for you and that is how you actually add to a dictionary to create a themed crossword so if you found this useful don't forget to hit the like button and also don't forget to hit the subscribe button the little be above my head to be notified about any other videos I make and if you haven't seen the word search video go and check that out as well and while you're at it go and check out my other activity books videos that I've made using PowerPoint I'll leave the playlist here for you